Tonight, Tara Grant's children all grown up and sharing an important message with all of you almost 15 years after their mother's brutal murder. The murder of Tara Grant sent shockwaves across the country. The young wife and mother of two was killed by her own husband in her Macomb County home. Now for the first time, Tara's children are sharing their story with the hope of helping others. Our Hank Winchester was out front and center covering this story and you've kept in close contact with the family, Hank. Yeah, Karen, I've, I've talked with them a lot over the years, and I'll tell you what, it's so good to see how the kids are doing today. They're actually no longer kids. They're both college students. I'm so impressed with how both Lindsay and Ian have not only dealt with their past, but how they're using what they've learned to help other people all over this area. When this tragedy first played out back in 2007, Tara Grant's children were just four and six years old. Their lives turned upside down in an instant. Their mother murdered by their own father. A custody battle got underway. It was Tara's sister Alicia and her husband Eric who not only gained custody, but the responsibility of working to help these fragile children deal with such a devastating loss. I just want to say thank you that everyone comes out here every year. Today, Tara's children, Ian and Lindsay, are back in Macomb County. Being able to go and spread the word and make sure that somebody else doesn't have to ever go through stuff that like me or my sister or my mom or anybody else in my family's had to go through. They return every year for the Tara Grant Run Walk, a chance to remember their mother and to help raise awareness about domestic abuse. And if I can change that one person's life, that would just make all of this like totally worthwhile. They're just miles away from their former home, the site of the murder. But in reality, mentally, they're miles away from that single moment. Their lives shaped by their past, yes, but more importantly, by the love and support they received over the years. I will advocate therapy to anybody and everybody that I meet. And it's, I don't think I would be the person I am today unless I worked with psychologists that I did. Lindsay is now almost 21, a student at Ohio State. Her focus on the future but it's a reminder of her past. So I would kind of wanted to go into psychology for a while. Um, and when I was picking like a field of psychology, because there's a lot, um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to work with kids because that was the most impactful time that I had working with psychologists was when I was younger after everything that happened with my mom. So. Lindsay wants to help other children who've dealt with traumatic events in their own lives. She clearly understands the pain. Do you even really have much of a memory of that time of your life? So I do, um, and it's actually kind of interesting because like, I'll like, cross-reference almost like what it feels like to be the patient on the flip side of it rather than being the actual psychologist. Yeah. And so I'll look at it, I can see it from both perspectives, and I think that that's why I would be really successful at it is because I know what it feels like to be sitting on the opposite side of it. How did they kind of help you navigate all of this, do you um, think? They helped me find coping mechanisms and ways to, to channel how I was feeling. Um, that's the reason I'm super into art now is because um, I had a therapist who was like, you already like to draw, so draw how you're feeling. So, and I still do that to this day. Do you have any desire at all to talk to Steven? I have a thought about it, um, but I don't think that I ever will need to. Um, if I ever choose to do it, it'll be, it'll be because I wanted to. On your not terms. because, yeah. 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 Um, for a long time, I want, I felt like I needed to speak to him to have closure, but I think that I created closure for myself. You know, I recognize that everything happens for a reason, and I live by that every single day. And so I don't need him for the closure that I got. Ian, now a college freshman in uh, Wisconsin. When you come back here to town, though, is it is there an emotional part of it that's tough for you? It kind of rehashes some stuff, which is about like when I was younger, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I know that's like personally a little bit harder for myself, but at the same time, if I have to go through a little bit of pain just to help a little bit, like every, like a lot of people out, I'm 1,000% willing to do that. Do you have much of a memory of all of that? Not, I have like bits and pieces, but not like total memory just because I was only four years old when it happened. And have you had any contact at all with Steven at all? I have not. No. No. Is that something you want? Uh, not particularly, just because I have a really good place with my family right now and there's no point kind of contacting him just because he did what he did and at that yeah. point it's just out of my life. Both Lindsay and Ian have turned the tragedy in their own lives into an opportunity to help other people. This month, Domestic Violence Awareness Month and unfortunately during the pandemic, cases of domestic violence dramatically on the rise. I like to be able to spread the word to pretty much just like end domestic violence because I've been through that situation and I'm just trying to make sure nobody else has to go through that again. I think that the biggest issue that happens surrounding domestic violence is that people are afraid to leave. 
And so just knowing that no one's going to judge you, that everyone is going to be there for you to love and support you and that you have help if you need it.